Okay, today we will make the pattern for the basic bodice block or we call it la coursage in French. Uh, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the box we make for our pattern has to be centralized in the center of the sheet. So the size of the box is uh, 44 and a half by 49 which means that the length of the pattern is 44 and a half centimeters and the width of the pattern is 49 centimeters. The patterns we make are always in centimeters because this is French high fashion uh, pattern making so uh, we only work in centimeters here. So the first thing we do is we measure the width of the sheet. So we mark it and then we check so it's 74.9. So what we will do is we will subtract 74.9 from uh, we will subtract uh, 49 from 74.9. So we get 25.9 as the balance. So what we will do is we will divide this by 2. So we have two equal sections. We will go back to our sheet. So once you measure the width of the sheet, uh, you will subtract the width of the pattern from that. So what you get, the balance amount, you divide it by 2 and that's equally distributed on both sides. So in this case, it's 74.9. You minus uh, 49 from that. It's 12.9, uh, it's it's 25.9 and you divide it by 2, you get 12.95. So you measure precisely 12.95 and you mark a dot here. And then you come in this side of the sheet, you again measure 12.95 12 and you mark a dot here. So once you have marked 12.95 on this side of the paper, you will mark 12.95 on the other side of the paper. So you will have uh, equal uh, distance on both sides uh, of the, the sheet. And then just to make sure if the pattern is of the exact size, you re-measure the inner distance of the, of, the, of the box. So I am getting exactly 49 centimeters, which you can see from my scale. Now, since we have marked our dots on both sides, what we can do is we can mark a straight line on to get the first line right. If you need, you can always recheck the size of your box and this is exactly 49 centimeters as you can see from my scale. Now the next thing is uh, once you have got the width of your box correctly, uh, the next thing is you will measure the length of the sheet. So the length of the sheet is 55. You subtract 44.5 from that and you get 10.5. So that 10.5 is further divided by 2 and you get 5.25. So I'm going to measure 5.25 from here and 5.25 from the top and vice versa on the other side. So like that I will get, so this is 5.25. I mark a dot here. I come on the other side of the paper you know, I measure 5.25 and I mark a dot there. Then I will measure 5.25 here, you know, I will mark my dot here and 
the same on this side. Once that is done, you use your metal scale, which is the best way to go, and you mark the line. Secondly, you will place the scale on the upper side where you have marked your point. Keep your lines steady and firm. That contributes to a good pattern. So if needs be, you can always recheck the size of the box and see this is precisely 44 and a half you measure on this side as well and it's precisely 44 and a half okay the next thing we do is we uh, we start putting in uh, uh, drafting the the actual pattern so the, the good thing at this point is put the relevant information on your pattern Okay, on the, on the right hand corner of your sheet, what I would want is that you put your name I also want you to put the measurement of the pattern so anybody who looks at the pattern they get all the information required so the width of the pattern is 49 and the height is 44.5 uh, you should also write the date because uh, you will make a lot of patterns and you will forget when you did it and then you put the date of your pattern okay this is the basic information that everyone's pattern should have now this side we can write inside the box on on this side which is the right side of my, me uh, I will write center front Re Try to put as much information inside the box. And on this side, we will write center back. Now, the next thing is that we will measure from the top of the box, which we can call as zero point here. Uh, we will measure down 25.5 centimeters and mark the bust line. So I will place my scale precisely. So what I've done is, um, you know, to, to make my patterns more precise, I usually place my zero point at one. And then when I come to the end of it, you know, I will add one just to get my measurement as per my requirement. So I mark 25.5 here. And then I will mark 25.5 on this side of the pattern.
you use your metal scale, align these two points, to make sure that you get your pattern right. So that will give you the bus line. So you can even write this information as you go along. A good pattern always have all the relevant information required. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to define the burst point of my pattern. So parallel to my center front I will mark a line at 10 centimeters. So to get it really precise, I will measure it right at the bottom of my box, 10 centimeters. And then I will measure this at the top of my box. And if I want to make my pattern even more precise I can use a third point as well which can be on the bust line and I mark at 10 centimeters you will use your scale Align these three data points and make a nice, firm, steady line in one go. Now, this point is the bust point. So, um, you know, I'm going to write it. So this intersection is how we got the burst point of our pattern. So the ne next thing is that we want to get uh, the neckline of my pattern. So in order to get the neckline of my pattern, I'm going to measure 36.5 from on the center front from the waist upwards. So, I measure 36.5. Now what I need to do is, I need a 90 degree angle here. So you make sure that you've got a 90 degree angle here, you know, because we will merge our neckline into it. And the reason we make sure it's a 90 degree angle at this point is because once the pattern is completed and you cut it on fold, uh, if it is not 90 degrees, it will make a point here. So we want to avoid that. And then from the zero line, we will measure 6.5. We mark it 6.5, put an arrow, we put an arrow so you know that in which direction you're moving. And now you can connect these two points with a straight dotted line.
measure this distance pre precisely that is 11 point uh, sorry 10 point 1 2 3 so 10.3 divided by 2 you get 5.15 so this is 5 this is 1 and the center of between 1 and 2 is 1 5 so you get the half of the line you will again use your set square and you will mark a flash You will mark a flash and you measure 2.5 centimeters. So that's my point. So I've marked this line, centralized it, marked a flash at 90 degrees angle. Now I've got these three points. The, the first point is here, the second is here, and the third one is here. But I need to leave a little bit of my distance just to get my neckline right. So I will place my French curve in a way that I merge into that line and we ensure that So you see what I've done, I've aligned these three points. And if you can see that, you know, I have merged into my straight line in a way that, uh, you know, I still get roughly one centimeter from the center front for that line. So the next thing is uh, we want to find out the shoulder slope. In order to do that, from my bust point, I'm going to measure 22.5. And from the base of my neck, I'm going to measure 13.5. And I will identify this point, which will give me the shoulder slope as well. In order to do that, you need two scales. You need to place them simultaneously so that you can get that point in one go. So it is very important that in your pattern making you stay extremely precise because every millimeter counts. So you see what I have done is I have measured 13.5 here and I have measured 22.5 from my burst point you know making it very precise and I will mark my dot. Now this is my shoulder slope. So what I want to do is at this point I want to mark a dotted line here And I want to join these two points.
the next thing is I want you to measure 1.5 from this straight line which is our 10 centimeter line and make it a bold line so I will measure 1.5 here And now I can make this line a bit bolder. So you mark an arrow and you write 1.5 so you know how much you have moved. Now that I've identified this part, this is where my dart will start. This depth of my dart, the shoulder dart, will be 6.7 centimeters. So I will measure 6.7 and mark it. And since I measure from 1, so it will be 7.7. .7. I can always put an arrow here and write that measurement so I don't forget. I can also write the measurement which I used to get my shoulder slope which is 22.5 and on this we had 13.5. So you do not forget the measurements. Once this is in place, now the next thing is that you need a tracing paper um, uh, to open the dart. But before we open the dart, we need to get the caro line for my pattern. So from my center front, I will measure 18.5. And I will square up. Okay, there is another way to do it that you can actually measure on the top line 18.5 so you get aligned with it uh, and definitely it will give you more precision for your line. So since we do not need to go right to the top of it, we just need to make sure that this is a 90 degrees angle. So you, what, what we have done is we have marked a line parallel to my center front which is exactly at 18.5. And this all we are doing to find the front caro line. Now I will put my scale at the base of my neck and measure 18.5 wherever it falls on my line. So this is the exact point that I get. I'm going to mark it. And the distance I'm getting from the bus line is 11.4, which means, you know, you've got it right. So the two ways I can have my line is I mark exactly the same on the center front line.
so I can double check while I am making that line and then I will square that line across This will be my front caro line. Now that I have that in place, you know, um, I've got pretty much most of my things in order. Um, now we can come to our front waist dart. So what we can do is at this stage from my center front towards this line I will measure 8 centimeters. So you mark it and you write 8. After this 8 centimeter I want to measure 3.35 1 2 3 1 2 3 and in the middle of the 2 millimeters so I can again put an arrow here and write the size of my dot connect these two points to the bust point And that will give you your front waist dart. Now, coming on to the next part, we will mark the side seam, which is from my center front 26.5 centimeters. So I will measure 26.5. mark it and you can right here then at the top you do the same thing and you mark six point twenty six point five put an arrow here you can write it Use your big scale and join these two points. So this exactly is not your side seam because your um, side seam will have a slight slope to it but uh, for our reference uh, we have this line which gives us uh, the size of the front which is 2 cm bigger than the back. The reason we keep it 2 cm bigger than the back is for visual effect because we don't want the side seam to be showing in the center of my shirt. So measure 
from this point upwards 22.5. So we measure 22.5 and we mark it. So it's 22.5. From this line, you go towards your right. From this point, we will go towards my right 2.7 for the front. So we measure 1, 2, 5, 6 and 7. That's my point. And we will join 2.7 with 22.5 to get my exact side seam. So this exactly is the side seam for my front bodice. It will be a good idea if you can actually have an intersection there. So that will give you the clarity. Now the next thing is we need to open uh, this front dart 6.7 centimeters and then finish the front of it. Okay. Make sure that your front carrow line finishes till this 18.5 centimeter line. And then we can connect the edge of my shoulder to my carrow line. with a dotted line like this so now I'm going to show you how we open the darts very simple you mark the points precisely And then trace the lines. Okay, this is uh, very important to understand that once we open the dart, this is still my front carrow line. So see what I've done is I have traced this part, which is a bit like a flag and I will pivot it on the bust point. Everything is precise. And if you remember, we marked our 6.7 centimeter point here. So what I will do is I will open my dart up to my 6.7 line like this. And that is it. So what I have right now is, you know, new points 
which I can mark and get my uh, line right. So a good way would be that you can actually mark little holes on the tracing paper exactly on those points. So that will save you putting holes in the actual pattern. And for a straight line, what you really need is connecting dots. So you see, I have opened up my dart. So I'll show you again. So this is exactly where my pattern is. You know, I opened up my dart up to 6.7 centimeters. Now there are two ways, either I can use my tracing wheel and mark all these lines or the one I've showed you since I've already put holes on the tracing paper, I will mark my points and that should be enough because all the tracing is in straight lines. as you can see all the lines are there I can remove this and connect all these points okay now Connect these dots for the Caroline. This is my exact shoulder slope which we, we transferred using our tracing paper. And I can double check by putting my tracing paper back on the pattern and it is precise. So we connect these two dots very precisely and there you go. Anything extra, you must rub or cancel. Now that I have this in place, I can connect 22.5 with my front carol line, which is again here. So we connect these two precisely. I will measure the distance which is seven point one because it's in the middle of two millimeters so 7.15 divided by 2 it's 3.575 so it's 3.5675 it is very important that even half a millimeter is not ignored now I need to mark a flash downwards one point nine. So after I have centralized it, 
I will measure 1.9 so it's 1 and 1.9 here I get my precise point here and then I will make the underarm okay it is very important that you get it right okay if I extend my line straight down the underarm should not cross that point so I have to work with my Parroquet or the French curve and I will align my three points precisely and I will mark my underarm. So you see if I extend my line my curve does not cross over and that completes the front of my basic bodice uh, the most important thing in every pattern and every panel that you need to ensure is the grain line so we can use our um, center front line as our grain line in that way so we we mark an arrow like this and we write grain line or dot field and that completes the front of my basic corsage now let's come to the back of the basic corsage Okay, from this point from this point on the center back we will go up 43 centimeters and we will mark it The first thing we will be making in the back will be the neckline. So like we had 6.5 um, in the front, we will have 6.5 at the back from the center back towards the side seam. So we make sure that the base of the neck meets. So this is my 6.5, I'll put an arrow here and mark 6.5. You need to square to the right. This is also 6.5. I will measure 6.5 on this line and square up. So this is my 6.5. I will also measure 3 centimeter and mark it. So this is 3. I will square up on this and join these two points and now I will use my French curve to get the neckline right so what is important is that when I am making the neckline I should merge by this 3 centimeter point so I will place my French curve in a way that 
we start here and we will merge in this line like I just did. So we get the back of the neckline. The next thing we do is again from this the the from the bottom of the box the reason I'm not calling it a waistline is because after we true it this line will no longer exist we will have a new line so from this point onwards we will measure 38.75 so I will measure Thirty-eight, thirty-eight point five, six, seven, and five. So I measure thirty-eight point seven five on this line, and then I will measure the same thirty-eight point seven five on the other line. So this is 38.75, I've measured it on both lines. Now I can make a straight line or I can use my set square, either way I can get the line right. So you can always check if the angle is correct and it is at 90 degrees. So all the lines you square to the right, square to the left, everything is at 90 degrees because that's how we maintain the balance of our pattern. Now we will mark the shoulder slope. And in order to do that, we will measure from the base of the neck 15 centimeter anywhere on this line, wherever it comes. So we will mark it here, wherever it comes. Fifteen centimeter. You can put a straight line, connect it. Now, this shoulder slope for the back is different from the shoulder slope in the front, but that we will balance when we will true this pattern. Now from the base of the neck, I want you to measure 1.8 centimeters and mark it. And then from there, I want you to measure one centimeter. So this is one centimeter and I will even mark half of it. So this distance is 1.8 and this again is 1. Now this is an interesting point because we need to make the shoulder dart here. So the reason I mark the center of the dart is I will use my set square, align it with the central line and mark the center of my dart up till 
one centimeter below the line and then I will connect to make it a full dot very very important that you are precise in the way you are drafting your pattern and that gives me the shoulder dot now the next thing is I need to find my back carol line so from this 22.5 point I will measure 9.1 so I will measure 9.1 very precisely and mark it. And I need to square to the left. But what I also can do is measure this point all the way to my bus line to double check when I'm squaring across. So you remember the front of my block had 18.5 so we will mark exactly 18.5 for the back carol line as well. We will join the edge of the shoulder to my back carol line so this is my back carol line now I want you to connect your back carol line to the underarm mark this line very precisely measure it so so it's 9.95 so 4. Point, so half of it will be 4.975 So I mark the center of that line and like the front since I need to draw my underarm I will mark an arrow a flash down one point nine so I will measure one point nine and mark it. Now I will use my French curve again and I will align these three points to get a precise line ensuring that I do not go over if I make a straight line here so 
So you see, that's how we get the complete armhole done. Truing is a part which will, which will be secondary at this point. First, we need to get our basic block right. Now on the, this line, we will measure 8 centimeters like we did for the front. And then after 8, I want you to measure 2 centimeters. and mark the center of it. This center will be at 9 centimeters which means that will be my center of my dart. So 8 centimeters and then you've got 10. Uh, I need to square it up so I will mark the center of my dart line And I will mark my dart, my back waist dart. Et voila. And that's the back done. Uh, again, very important part is my grain line. So each pattern will always have a separate grain line. So as many pieces you will have in a pattern, that's the number of grain lines you will mark. So I can mark my center back as my grain line. And I can write that this is the back of my pattern. And that's it. That completes my basic bodice block, the corsage, la corsage. Now, the next step we will do is the truing of this pattern. So, the only thing left is the side seam of my back. So, 1 centimeter, 2 centimeters, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, and 2.8. So the front was 2.7, the back will be 2.8. You put an arrow, write 2.8 here. And we will join this. So that will give me my side seam. Bear in mind that we still need to true this pattern where we balance the front and the back and it's easier to put it in production for stitching. So we will take a tracing paper and now we will start doing the truing of my pattern. So what I've done is I marked my center back exactly as by my pattern on my tracing paper. The next thing I want to do is I want to mark the back neckline. Up till this point and I will trace my dart. Okay, what I need to do here is close the dart first to get my dart size correct. So I will pivot it here. And I will close my dart. 
and you see what happens is that I get two lines which are not the same. So I will mark this point and I will mark my shoulder edge. So what has happened is that I've got the beginning of my dart, I've got the end of my shoulder slope, but when I close it, you know, there is a difference between the two and there is the, the slope is of not the same size. So at this stage, what I can do is make it straight. So I will use my beginning and the end to mark a straight line. I can cancel like this so I remember that this line is cancelled. I can extend my line, my dart a little bit further up till the line. Now it is important for me to get this point right. So I mark a hole on my tracing paper. I mark this point and I will close this dart again and I will mark the new point. So Again, because it's a straight line, it's much easier. So I will do my first transformation. And I will increase my dart here. And add the extra bit. Then I will come to my second part of the dart. You see, this is all cancelled, this is all cancelled, this is all cancelled. So I have a new line here, which is my shoulder slope for the back. Now I can take this line, put it on the front. So now I will flip my tracing paper and put my center back on my center front. And trace the line. So you see I have actually put my center back exactly on my center front. So I get my front neckline which is exactly and precisely the same point as my back. And I, I need to trace this here. So you see, my tracing paper should at least be up till my bust point. Otherwise, um, I will have a problem opening this dart. So since there is a lot of lines here I will try to make it easy for you first thing I need to do is I need to add to my tracing paper
So what I'm doing here is, if you're short of paper, then you can add an extra bit to it so that you can do your job correctly. And I will change the color on my tracing paper as well so you can see. the new step. So my front shoulder slope is completely different from my back shoulder slope. So I will mark up to my bust line. And I will mark this. So you see my front shoulder slope is different from my uh, from the back. Now if you see the dotted line that is also an extension of the front shoulder. So either I can use that line or I open the dart to finish the job. So since this is a straightforward option, we should take it. And the important thing is that we mark the edge. So we have definite points for... So now you see my front shoulder slope in blue color and you can see the back shoulder slope which is in pencil so this is my back shoulder slope so what we need to find uh, we need to find a compromise between the two so we balance the shoulder slope so the way we do it is we measure this distance and we mark the center point exactly the way I'm doing diagonally. We measure it and we mark the center point. So this is my exact center of that line. I've changed the color again so you can see the new line. And now I will draw my new line. To the exact center point. <coughs> Which means I need to extend my front dart a little bit here on the shoulder slope. So I will add to my front but I will subtract from my back so we find this compromise a shoulder slope right in the middle now the reason it is important is because when we are stitching we need this so the two ways we can do it either I mark my points and since it's a straight line I prefer marking my points on the tracing paper but you can always use a tracing wheel to 
get it right so I will go back on my center front place the dart properly place my center front where it needs to be exactly on top of my center back on top of my center front and I will mark this point or I can use my tracing wheel and mark the new lines. In fact, I will use a little bit of tracing wheel here to mark this. So I've got this point, I've got these dots and I've got the beginning of it. Now I will pivot it again and open my dart and you see once I open it I get my new points here so this is my new point and this is my new point so which means my my front and back armhole needs to change but that we come back to in a minute So I have marked these dots and I will make the line here. So I've extended that extra part here. I will do the same on this side. I extended that. I will place it with the base of my neck and the, the, the dots you can see. And there you go. So the two options I have is either I cross my line like this or I rub it, whichever you want to adopt. But this is my new shoulder slope. Now, since we have transferred my new shoulder slope on my front, we need to do that on the back as well. So since the edge of the shoulder has changed, so I will connect this new line here and I will cross the old line. So, I will flip it back. Place it where it was originally. And you see, I, I get my new line here. So, I will pivot my dart exactly where it should be, place it, mark a dot, for the new line. You see it has gone down a little bit. I will open my dot and I will mark the two dots. You can again use your tracing wheel. Um, I feel I can do it precisely without it. So I will mark this new point and this line is also redundant. So I've got this line gone, this line gone. 
this is the edge of my shoulder so I can connect this to the caroline this is also redundant and you know I need to make this new point which is line below it and the top part is redundant so since there are too many lines here now uh, and you've seen the procedure I will erase the ones I don't need So whatever I'm left off is what I require. So I will keep my new lines balancing the shoulder slope for the front and for the back. So you see this bit of lines here but you've got it right I can erase what I don't need for the front as well Okay, so the shoulder is done. The next thing we can do is do the, the armhole. Either we can do the armhole or we can actually, let's, let's finish the armhole first, the upper part then we come to the lower. So we know that the length of the shoulder slope is the same and we know the angle of the shoulder slope is the same. So we don't need to trace the entire shoulder now. What we need is just the edge of it. This is a straight line as well. We mark a straight line. We won't need more than that but let's say this is my back. Now, using your tracing paper, I am going to virtually stitch my back to my front. So when I place it here, you see, I get a little point. And for a good garment, you should never have a point. So I will use my French curl and just using the minimum adding the minimum amount to true it so i will actually merge start from this to the back merge the line in a smooth curve so you see what i've done is i've merged it and i can cancel the old line that I will use my tracing wheel here and mark it 
is my front. So you see, I, I get the new point. Whenever you are truing, try to add minimum amount, just the amount required to true it. And then we will true the back. You know, just go over a little bit. So when you are replacing your French curve, you know where you are going. So extend this line up till the curve and extend this line in the front up till the curve use your French curve to redraw the line neatly cross what is not required we come back here and So what we have done is, we have chewed the edge of the shoulder. Now before we chew the underarm of the, the, the sleeve, what we need to do is, um, balance the side seam. In order to balance the side seam, what you do is you mark the reference lines, which is your bust line and the waist line. So this is my bust line. And this is my Line. Place the side seam of the back slope and also trace the underarm a little bit. This is just for reference. We are not truing the underarm right now. We are actually truing the Side seam. So this is my back. I will flip it over and place my bus line on my bus line and see if there is a difference between the two. And if you can see closely, there is like a little bit of a difference between the two lines. So that difference needs to be removed. It should have the exact same shoulder slope. Okay. So I will use a slightly different color for you to see the difference. So there is a minimal difference, but the difference is there. So, you know, you need to move right into the center of it and you get it all correct. So this is my front side seam. So now if you look at it, you can see there is a difference here. You take the half of it and you mark it. So what happens is that for the front you will add half a millimeter, for the back you will minus, uh, you, you will minus half. 
so it, since this is a very fine detail you know we can actually do it directly so we know for the front we need to add half a millimeter so i will place my scale here and add half a millimeter to it so for for the front we have added one half a millimeter for the back we will minus half a millimeter for some people it might not be a big difference but for me this is a disaster so we have to make sure that we get our pattern precisely balanced so i will mark my new lines and you see there is this half a millimeter difference on both sides but now the pattern is completely balanced now the next thing we can do is we balance the arm here so i'll use a clean part so you can see clearly so my new line i will trace it and now i can trace my underarm back underarm okay pivot this stitch it together like this now trace the front of the arm hole up till the caroline and you have a look at it in in this particular case i i don't need to do much because it's already a very smooth line so we can we can keep the way it is but if it was not a smooth line then we can use the french curve to make it you know smoother but it's already a good line okay the last thing on this pattern is the hemline and i will quickly explain how it works so i need to trace from my center back to my center front closing all the dots so maybe we can do here and that will give me my final hemline okay so okay. i will trace my center back i will trace this dart and i will trace this line so my center back pivot it here close the dart Pivot it here. Close the dart. 
and you see we get a little point here. So I will trace this line quickly, mark it. Now I will trace my side seam. I will pivot it here and close my side seam. And I get this distance, mark it up till my bus dart. Now pivot on my bus dart, unpin the side seam, close it. And this is my center front. So we come up to my center front line and we mark it. And you see, we've got points here all over. So I will use my French curve smooth these lines to the to the point that it's a smooth line merging from one to another. So I've added a little bit here. I've added at the sign scene and at the backed out. So, because they're all straight lines, I will just quickly extend these lines for the addition I have made. Coming back to the front, I can use my tracing wheel here and merge this line up till that point and mark my point as well so I know where my dart is ending. Okay. Open it. Transfer it on this side as well. the start so we're all sorted shift it on the front Transfer the tracing marks here, this one, now the back dot, so you know you have to extend it a little bit here and right where we started my center back on my center back. What we see, we see these lines going down, we quickly extend our lines further down 
up till that point. So I will extend till my new tracing lines are. Take your French curve and you draw the lines you have traced. As soon you make this, this is cancelled. Take it over. Trace it, cross this one. Cross this one. Cross this one. And the last one. So that completes the truing of the waistline. And now, now you see this is my actual new waistline uh, which is different from the box because it, it changes a little bit. The, the one last thing you can do to finish it off nicely is uh, you extend this a little bit and you mark these areas so you, when you cut out your patterns the space is not because then it's not easy to handle with an open dart so you finish off these points nicely For the top dart, what you can do is just take the half This is so You just mark the half of it and you mark a dotted line extend this dart to the line and join this so your dart is nice and neat is your back shoulder dart you already have a central line with it extend this extend it through the dart and mark it and voila so what you have done is you have made a complete bodice block, you have trued the bodice block and now this is good for making garments. Thank you very much.